One Zambia, One Nation. Good evening. Welcome to the news at 18 hours on TV2. My name is Chilufia Mwelua. Our top stories in the news this evening, the inter-party hearing in the matter where the UPND is seeking an order to restrain Chief Justice Irene Mambilima from swearing in President-elected Galungu and Vice President-elect Inongewina is still ongoing in the Lusaka High Court. A Zambia Army Sergeant of Apollo Camp in Lusaka West has shot dead his wife with an AK-47 rifle after a domestic dispute. And coming up in foreign news, U.S. President Barack Obama has chided Donald Trump as wacky and uninformed after the Republican candidate said Russia's President Vladimir Putin was a better leader. And now the details. The inter-party hearing in the matter where the UPND is seeking an order to restrain Chief Justice Irene Mambilima from swearing in President-elect Edgar Lungu and Vice President-elect Inongewina is still ongoing in the Lusaka High Court. TV2's Hector Simfukwe reports that the matter is before Lusaka High Court Judge Mwila Chitawo. The matter initially came up for inter-party hearing in chambers in the High Court this morning, but was adjourned to this afternoon. UPND President Haga Hichilema and his deputy Geoffrey Waliamwamba have filed a petition in the Lusaka High Court after the dismissal of their 2016 presidential petition by the Constitutional Court. They have argued that Justice Mambilima, Deputy Chief Justice Marvin Mwanamwambwa, or any other authority must not swear in, swear in President Lungu and Mrs. Winner until the determination of the case challenging the dismissal of the presidential election petition. Mr. Hichilema and Mr. Mwamba have cited President Lungu, Mrs. Winner, the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, Attorney General Likando Kalaluka, Justice Mambilima, Justice Mwana Mwambwa, and the Constitutional Court as first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh respondents. President Lungu's inauguration ceremony takes place on Tuesday, September 13th, 2016. This morning, the Attorney General had asked the High Court to deem Mr. Hitchlema and his running mate, Geoffrey Mwamba, as vexatious litigants. A vexatious litigation is legal action which is brought regardless of its merits solely to harass or subdue an adversary. Mr. Kalaluka said the two should not be allowed to start legal proceeding without leave from the court. He said, the, he said before allowing the two, the court should make sure that their proceedings are not an abuse of the court process. Mr. Kalaluka said his application was in accordance to Section 16 and 2 of the High Court Act. Now, the Zambia police has warned anyone intending to perpetrate violence during the inauguration of President Edgar Lungu that they will be dealt with by the law. Lusaka Province Police Commissioner Nelson Piri says police officers will be deployed in various places to ensure the safety of all the expected guests. Mr. Piri has also assured members of the public that it has put up sufficient security measures ahead of Tuesday's inauguration ceremony for the president-elect. Mr. Piri was speaking in an interview with ZNBC News in Lusaka today. The inauguration ceremony of the president-elect will take place on Tuesday, September 13, 2016, at the National Hero Stadium here in Lusaka. Meanwhile, the Zambia Institute of Marketing, ZIM, has projected that business will return to normal after the inauguration of President Edgar Lungu on Tuesday next week. ZIM President Evans Mohanga says the business environment has, for the past months, been affected due to the recent political situation in the country. Mr. Mohanga says majority of business firms will now be at liberty to conduct their business activities following the conclusion of the 2016 presidential petition case. He was speaking to ZNBC News shortly after he officially opened the Zambia Institute of Marketing workshop in Lusaka. They need an environment which is stable. And what happened after the elections, of course there was this unstableness, the market not able to open up and people not moving freely to be able to make sure that buyers and sellers can interact. But uh, this is now behind us and the Zambians of Marketing, we are very happy that 
you know, the situation is now uh, okay. And uh, our marketers, sellers can be able to interact. So obviously, even for people who are selling goods and services, they need an environment which is very conducive to be able to do the trade. And uh, as ambience of marketing, we are really glad. And this is why today, for example, we are now even have a session about A to Z selling to bring marketers out there to know the power of persuasion, to know the power of how to influence their buyers. Now, a Zambia Army sergeant of Apollo Camp in Lusaka West has shot dead his wife with an AK-47 rifle after a domestic dispute. Patrick Chewe, 41, shot his wife Linus Tembo, 39, in the chest and left lower ribs. Police spokesperson Ray Hamonga says the incident happened around 10.50 hours today. Mr. Hamonga says the suspect used two rounds of ammunition and has since been arrested. The body of the deceased has since been taken to the University Teaching Hospital Mortuary. Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit DMMU National Coordinator Patrick Kangwa says the remaining 31 families at Namwala Secondary School who were recently displaced due to post-election violence will be repatriated tomorrow. Mr. Kangwa says the families will be repatriated within Namwala District and the camp will then be closed. Mr. Kangwa was speaking today when parishioners at St. Ignatius Parish donated assorted goods to the families through DMMU in Lusaka today. And Father Charles Chilinda says there is need for Christians to follow the Christian teachings by helping the needy in society. Details are in the following report. It's caring. And this is exactly what the parishioners here at St. Ignatius Parish are doing. They are donating various types of items to the displaced residents of Namwala, Southern Province. Father Charles Tilinda, who made the donation on behalf of the parish, says the Christian's duty is to respond in practical ways. You know, as Christians, we are called to exercise charity and compassion. Um, in, Matthew, in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus says, um, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. And so the Christian calling is to respond in practical ways uh, to the challenges that we um, experience in life. And the Disaster Management Mitigation Unit, DMMU, National Coordinator, Patrick Kangwa, says the DMMU will continue to monitor the livelihoods of the displaced even as the repatriation exercise continues. We are remaining with 31 households. These 31 are still in camp for a specific reason. These are going to be reintegrated within Namwala. Now, we were unable to repatriate them to their respective places because we had to wait for the outcome of the political situation that was pertaining at the time. However, processes have started and by tomorrow 17 hours we will have these groups repatriated within Namwala and the camp will be closed at 17 hours tomorrow. This donation will surely go a long way for the people of Namwala. Luando Hamwala, TV2 News in Lusaka. Also in the news, the Civil Society for Poverty Reduction, CSPR, is disappointed with the alleged misappropriation of funds at the Zambia National Farmers Union. And CSPR has welcomed the call by the Swedish and Finnish governments for the, re for the repayment of misappropriated funds by the ZNFU. CSPR Resource Governance Coordinator Tommy Singongi has highly condemned the misuse of development of funds. Mr. Singongi has since called on government law enforcement agencies to take keen interest in ensuring that the findings of the report are acted upon to deter abuse of funds allocated for the public good. ZF nephew is alleged to have misappropriated 34 million kwacha, according to an in-depth review which was conducted by accounting firm KPMG Finland as a follow-up to the special audit that was completed in February 2016. We go for our first commercial break. We have more news after that. Stay with us. Welcome back. We continue with the news. 
Sergeant Marjorie Moyo, the traffic police officer who was hit by a minibus driver while on duty on the greatest road in March this year, is recovering well. Sergeant Moyo told TV2 News that she is expected to go back to Mill Park Hospital in South Africa after one year for more plastic surgery. Sergeant Moyo came back from treatment in April this year and was expected to go back for review after three months. She said that she has not gone back to South Africa. She is still waiting for the doctor's report from Mill Park Hospital. But I'm still waiting for the doctor's report from there, my plastic surgeon's report. Right now I'm okay. okay. Everything, oh, healed. yeah, everything is healed. I'm just waiting for the, for the surgery now. Yeah. It's supposed to be done after a year. Sergeant Moyo underwent the first surgery meant to reconstruct her shoulder that was crushed during the accident. The second surgery is meant to reconstruct the left side of her face. In other news, traders at Lusaka's Chilenje Market have called on the Lusaka City Council to allocate them the newly constructed shops. The traders have complained that they risk losing out on business once the rains are on. Several shops have remained unoccupied despite the construction works being completed. Here's a report. It is a normal working day for traders at Lusaka's Chilenje Market. Business is going on as usual. The traders here are forced to trade under the scorching sun. But these shops, more than 50 of them, have been lying idle since they were completed several months ago. The traders now want the Lusaka City Council to allocate the shops to the traders as soon as possible. Patrick Mwape is Chilenje Ward Councillor. He says works on the allocation of the market stores will start as soon as the induction of councillors is done. I haven't been, yet been installed in the office to find out why. Immediately that is done, I'm going to clear the air. And if they are complete, there is no need to keep them. We need to allocate them to the people. Once the allocation is done, traders here will no longer worry about the bad weather when conducting their business. Lufola Nkowani, TV2 News, in Lusaka. Moving on on the news, Zambia is among other countries celebrating International Literacy Day, which falls on September 8th, 2016. This year's theme is Reading the Past, Writing the Future. Meanwhile, some Lusaka residents seem not to have an idea of what this day is about. Here's a report. Today is like any other day. However, what makes this day special is that it is World Literacy Day. I took time to find out from some residents of Lusaka what they understood about this day. And these are some of the answers I got. This was not all. Some people have an idea about this thing and they once in a while read something. It is celebrated under the theme Reading the Past, Writing the Future. Parents should therefore take interest in encouraging their children 
to always read so that the level of literacy can be improved in our country. Martha Banda, TV2 News, in Lusaka. Now a 12-year-old girl of Garden House in Lusaka has gone missing. Brunel Chitaluna Luimba went missing on July 12, 2016, around 12 hours. Brunel, who was in grade 5 at Exile Primary School, was last seen wearing a uniform comprising a blue skirt, white shirt and black shoes. Her grandfather, Spec Chitembo, says Brunel is brown in complexion and medium height and speaks fluent Bemba and Nyanja. Mr. Chitembo says efforts to locate the whereabouts of his granddaughter have proved futile as the family has tried their best but to no avail. He has appealed to anyone with information to report to the nearest police station or call the number 0979-58-7639 or 0955-58-7639 or 0966-58-7639. Meanwhile, the family of a 14-year-old boy who went missing in June this year is still searching for their son. Mofat Ngulube of Chongwe has been missing since June and has not been found. Grandfather of the boy, Disma Spiri, has appealed to members of the public with information on the whereabouts of Mofat to report to the nearest police station or contact him on 0976-932202. We take our final commercial break and when we come back we have sports news as well as international news. Stay with us. Welcome back and now for the rest of the news. In foreign news, Barack Obama has chided Donald Trump as wacky and uninformed after the Republican candidate said Russia's President Vladimir Putin was a better leader. Speaking in Laos, Mr. Obama said that every time Mr. Trump spoke, it became clearer that the Republican contender was not qualified to be president. In a televised forum on Wednesday, Mr. Trump had praised Mr. Putin's great control and 82% approval rating. Mr. Trump and rival Hillary Clinton had taken questions from military veterans. And in sports news, more than 100 bodybuilders are expected to participate in this year's Mr. Independence contest, slated for Cabway next month. Bod Zambia Bodybuilding and Fitness Federation, ZBBFF, Treasurer Dani Sichilima, says the federation has decided to take the competition to Cabway in a bid to promote the sport in the region. Sichilima has, however, appealed to the corporate world, especially from Cabway, to help the federation meet the budget for the competition. The federation is still scouting for 40,000 kwacha from the total 70,000 kwacha to stage the competition. Take a look. These are some of the bodybuilders preparing for the 2016 Mr. Independence contest set for Cabway. After a successful Mr. Ironman held in Choma in June, the Federation is looking forward to the Mr. Independence next month. So we decided as a Federation to take it to Cabway because we really want to promote the sport of bodybuilding in Central Province. And this is for the first time that we are having it hosted in Cabway. Federation Treasurer Danny Sichilima is confident the event will be a success. We have already uh, paid for the venue and we are looking to, for some other logistics to make this uh, event a success. We have also communicated to the two members, members of uh, the new members of parliament, that's the Honorable Mushanga as well as Honorable Tutuangulubi. They are also willing to assist the federation to source funds for, for this competition. And Kawata Community Gym Chairman Paul Mwenda says his club will send more than six bodybuilders. The professions are okay. Uh, as you can see, the, the people that are training here, uh, we've got about four here and the two came in the morning. So I think we're ready for it. Reigning Mr. Zambia Sylvester Miller, who has dominated the sport since 2010, is likely not going to compete. The 2016 Mr. Independence Contest will be held on the eve of this year's Independence Anniversary in Kabwe. Chikom Koka for TV2 Sports News in Lusaka. Well, as we end the news, here's a reminder of the headlines. 
The inter-party hearing in the matter where the UPND is seeking an order to restrain Chief Justice Irene Mambilima from swearing in President-elect Edgar Lungu and Vice President-elect Inonge Wina is still ongoing in the Lusaka High Court. TV2's Hector Simfuke reports that the matter is before Lusaka High Court Judge Muila Chitabo. A Zambia Army Sergeant of Apollo Camp in Lusaka West has shot dead his wife with an AK-47 rifle after a domestic dispute. Patrick Chewe, 41, shot his wife Linus Tembo, 39, in the chest and lower left lower ribs. And U.S. President Barack Obama has chided Donald Trump as wacky and uninformed after the Republican contender uh, said Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, was a better leader. Speaking in Laos, Mr. Obama said that every time Mr. Trump spoke, it became clearer that the Republican contender was not qualified to be president. That's the news at 18 hours. We'll be back at 20 hours with another detailed news bulletin. My name is Chilofia Muelwa. Bye for now.